everyone, I'm Ed Vige, a coastal magnolia. I live in coastal Florida and I create art that is beach and coastal inspired. And today I want to try a technique that a lot of tumbler makers use with alcohol ink. And I'm going to do it on a clear wine glass to create this gorgeous marbled effect. And this is all using alcohol ink. So we've got a lot of work to do, so let's get in the studio. I've tried painting alcohol ink on clear glasses before and I ended up making a great big mess and alcohol was running all over the place. So probably didn't do it correctly. I will definitely try it again. So what I did for these four glasses was to just take a Rust-Oleum clear, I think it was semi-gloss clear, and I just sprayed the bowl of the glass. And, um, I just wanted to give the the alcohol ink a, a you know a kind of a I don't know not a slick surface if that makes sense um, and it kind of does give a it breaks the transparency of the glass and I was a little bit worried about that but um, I think the clear gloss or the clear spray just gives the ink something to stick to and now I'm really just dabbing it on with a brush, dabbing the ink on with a brush. And, um, you know, I've watched some, some YouTube videos on this and there are a lot of different techniques and this just looks like a hot mess right now. Um, you know, my hands are a hot mess is what it is. So really this, this is an experiment for me. I've never tried this, um, this tried the ink this way on a clear glass. So I'm really, taking a bold leap. To be honest, this looks right now like a hot mess. And initially, I wasn't happy with it. Like I was really considering just wiping it all off. But my mama did not raise a quitter and my daddy didn't either. So I'm continuing on with this process and just trusting it. It's a hot mess. I'm not going to lie. But it gets better. It, it's starting to look a little bit better. I feel like what I was doing was just painting a bunch of lines and it's it's almost too too straight. Like the lines are just too even and normal. It's not at all what I envisioned it would be. It's not at all like marble. It's just too straight. I'm trying to make it too perfect and trying to um, you know, just follow these nice, neat little lines. I mean, I guess it is kind of cool, but it's certainly not what I intended. And now I'm kind of getting impatient and just like slopping it on there in a really random, really random patterns. And then I think that's when the light bulb sort of went off in my head that, hey, it doesn't have to be even and pretty and nice and, you know, straight. And, um, so I'm just applying more ink and blending the, the edges a little bit. Still don't like it. I'm still not 100% happy with, with how it, it ended up because I don't I just don't like it. So the second one, I got a little bit more bold and a little bit more heavy with the ink and being even more random with the areas and trying to do bigger areas with color. And you can see the ink sort of running, running a little bit. I'm trying to control that, but like I said, it's hard. For me, it's hard because I haven't done this a whole lot. Um, but then I think that allowed me to really get a little bolder with, bolder and bigger with, with the areas of the, the ink placement trying to create something that's not as symmetrical and more natural. So this one, I think, turned out much better than the first one. The areas are a little bit bigger. I'm able to, <laughs> this was kind of 
uh, that was a total experiment. I was really getting impatient because I just was like, this is not working out. I'm frustrated. And then, oh my gosh, I really enjoyed doing this. I just was not, I'm not patient enough to do, to do, um, this technique with a brush. It just, of course, I was using a really small brush too, and that may be part of the problem, but, um, putting the ink directly on the glass and kind of letting the ink go where it wanted to go, that was, that is what I think I need to do from now on. It, I was a lot happier with that. It was a little quicker and, um, I don't know, just to, to me, I just liked it better. So the ink directly on the glass, I really like that. And that's kind of a, a, maybe a variation a little bit on the waterfall technique where you have a tumbler on a turner and you flood the, the tumbler with alcohol and then you apply the alcohol inks on it. That's the waterfall method. I've never, re- I've never tried that. So I may have to do that with glasses to see if it turns out. But so for me, I like this one. No, this is the ugly one. This is not ugly. It's not ugly. But the first class that I did, I just sprayed some straight up isopropyl alcohol on it with my spray bottle and just let it run. So this is kind of a variation of the waterfall method. I'm trying to trying to make this one work. I'm trying to make this one match a little bit more of what I think it needed to look like. And I do blow on it a little bit just to get the alcohol to move and get it to dry. So those two sort of kind of match. Um, now with the next two glasses, because I always want to make a matching pair, um, I do get a bigger paintbrush and I'm going to put the alcohol ink directly on the glass. And this is so much quicker. It is so much more of a natural look. I don't want to follow a pattern. I want it to look more natural. And so what I'm trying to do is, um, I've always been really fascinated with, um, on flat canvases, how people work with the alcohol ink and they create these really cool, these really cool patterns and these, um, they're moving the alcohol ink around and it sort of forms like, um, these, more defined edges. I don't know if I'm making sense, but it's kind of a, like a watercolor. And that's just really fascinating to me. So that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm moving the glass back and forth to, to get, to get the alcohol, the color to move and bring, bring more of the, the, um, the color to the edges. And so, I don't know, this just really turned out well. The colors are blending well together. The ink's not really moving that much. And if it does move, then I'm just taking my brush and kind of dabbing it and, um, you know, letting the ink go where it wants to go, but then taking the brush and sort of cleaning up the edges. And that's that's really creating a, um, a neat look. And I'm um, really liking that. And this was fun. This this is totally what I needed to do from from the very beginning. Just kind of you know, I've, wa- I've watched a lot of YouTube videos on on this technique um, for tumblers. I've never done this on a tumbler. I think I've said that already, but um, I've watched a lot of tumbler tutorials where they're using alcohol inks on tumblers that have been painted like white or another base color, not straight on the stainless steel. So this is working out really well. I am, well, I'm definitely going to try this technique again because it's, um, you know, allows me to, to use the colors that I want and, um, you know, creating some really cool patterns trying to, trying to make it look like, um, you know, trying to make it look like a, a marbled effect. And what I'm doing with my finger there is just seeing if the, the ink is going to rub off. And there are a couple of spots where the ink was, was rubbing off. So I'm just blowing on that there, but, um, it's really neat. I love this blue. This is that blue, 
I think it's the, the liquid resin dye that I mixed, um, liquid resin dye from KS Resin that I mixed with alcohol in a bottle and um, moving it back and forth to create those neat waves. See how it kind of creates this little wave ripple, like a ripple in the, um, in the ink. Um, but it's the KS Resin liquid resin dye that I mixed with alcohol. And that one probably was, is more of a true alcohol ink. Just making sure things are dry. And then, you know, I just keep dabbing it with alcohol to create, or dabbing it with the, um, the alcohol ink just to create some neat waves in it. Mess up where I put my fingers. Cleaning up the glass and um, cleaning up my rim. Make it nice and clean. And so this fourth glass, I feel like this is where I really have hit my groove with this technique. And I have some alcohol and it keeps getting dirty because I'm reusing the, the brush. But I had just have plain alcohol in that little, um, I think that's a takeout container lid or something. But I'm putting, so I'm putting the alcohol ink straight on the glass and dabbing it with um with alcohol and then I had a kind of a eureka moment to put alcohol in one of my dropper bottles instead of using the brush because the brush kept just getting dirty and contaminated so I'm kind of alternating between the my homemade alcohol ink and straight up plain al plain alcohol in my dropper bottle and creating the different sections and this time I'm creating bigger sections of color. I really like this one. The The ink did run, but it's creating those natural veins like marble would normally have. Of course, I've never seen this, this color marble, but um, you know what I mean. So creating bigger areas. I really like this glass. See, they, they, they sort of match. I mean, the colors match, but you're not going to create two two glasses that match exactly perfect. That would be impossible unless you're a robot or a machine, and I am not. So, um, so that's all I'm doing. I'm just keep layering on the alcohol ink, keep looking at it, inspecting it. That's really all I'm doing here. That's a neat area there. That's kind of a neat ripples. I love working with, with alcohol and alcohol inks. So this fourth glass, oh, my stomach's growling, but y'all can hear that. So this fourth glass, I, I really do feel like I hit my groove with this. It's um, not as much just blowing on a little bit, let it dry. I do have my fan going, but I just was blowing on it a couple of times. Um, oh, I don't know if you saw my shirt. Uh, I'll have to put a caption on that. It's my, um, it's a shirt, I, I think I got it. I don't know, Old Navy or something. It's my drink wine, be happy shirt. <laughs> um, but anyway, so on this glass, I really hit my groove. I There's not as much, not as much brush work on this one. It's almost, almost probably 80%. I'm just applying the ink and letting it run and then really only using the brush to clean up the edges. And when it runs, then I take my brush and, you know, clean up the edge. But this, this was really a fun one. I, I really felt like I hit my groove on this one. Did a little bit of layering, not as much layering as I have done, um, on flat surfaces, but still a little bit of layering, a little bit of blending.
save water, drink wine. Hmm. Wine is good for you, right? Now we're ready for resin. I've pre-mixed my KS Resin Liquidy Split. Of course, you can't see it because I was not paying attention. And just putting a liberal coat. I think I have 40... No, I mixed up 50 milliliters for the four glasses so that I would have plenty. And I'm just putting a really generous coat on each one of these. And this is sealing everything in and um, bringing out the shine. I did spray these with the Rust-Oleum Clear Spray just to lock in the alcohol ink and prevent any smudges because I did have some smudges previously for my fingers so I did want to avoid that and um, this is really the the final the final step really turned out nice I'm just using my heat gun on a uh, low heat setting high air setting just to pop the bubbles got a few areas there that I'm fixing with my pop just popsicle stick now, after about 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes, um, the resin's nice and set up. So I'm taking the leftover resin in the cup and I'm using it as a kind of like a glue on the backs of my charms and putting the, putting the resin on the back of the charm and then putting it on the glasses, just in, you know, kind of random spots. But I'm putting two charms for each glass. Now, my exacto knife my little exacto knife just cleaning up the edges where the resin has gotten on um boy that one's kind of tough there and use my sanding block to just get the edges nice and smooth and here they are all finished really pleased with this technique it was super fun you know it was a learning curve it was definitely a learning curve um, we'll definitely try this again, and um, I think I might try without using the Rust-Oleum spray just to see what happens. Um, yeah, why not? It's an experiment. Thanks again for watching this video. Hope you learned something new, and um, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel and helping me grow. Stay tuned for bloopers. So, so, this is a technique that a lot of tumblers, all right, that was way too long.